Hello adventurers, this is Craddock back again with another build. This is the Rathma's Requiem build for greaterest speeds. I say speeds, it's kind of a misnomer because this build moves extremely slowly, probably because the uh, Fueled by Death passive is kind of bugged at the moment, but whatever. Uh, it's still a pretty slow moving build, but the cool thing you can do with that is you can push into a higher greater rift than you would have normally for speeds and get extra experience and that sort of thing. It is a very glassy build, I'm gonna warn you up front, you will die a lot more with this variation, but it, once you get past the fact that you are going to die and not be able to have that fifth gem upgrade, you will do very well with this build and you will be able to clear, I'm clearing greater at 80s in uh, four to seven minutes, At the on the high end is seven minutes, but four minutes is just like, phew, out of, blown out of the water. <laughs> anyway, I'm gonna do. I'm gonna quickly go over the build uh, mechanics. Then I'm gonna go into uh, some of the affixes and some of the swaps you can make and variations you can do. And then we'll kind of wrap it up. So let's get into it. So I'm not gonna go into every little mechanic. I'm just gonna kind of gloss over it. If you want to see uh, how the build works, the skills are pretty much almost the same as the T13 variant, so I'll reference that video in the description, you can check that out. But in general, we're using the Singularity Mages, uh, buff our damage, they consume all our essence, to, uh, essence regeneration, we've got Siphon Blood with the extra essence rune, we've got a lot of attack speed in this build, we've got Swift Harvesting to help us generate that essence when we don't have any dead enemies nearby. When we have killed enemies and we have corpses available, that's when it gets really interesting because you start devouring enemies. You can use your Requiem Seraplate, which rest restores additional essence and life and even gives us a, a, a maximum mechanic that kind of gives you an overflow mechanic, which is really cool. Uh, you'll find when you engage high density with this build, this build it starts it doing really well in just mowing down the, the, the rift. Uh, we've got Dark Reaping, On Kill Essence, uh, we've got uh, Templar for additional generation, so we've got a lot of essence generation in this build. Very important. Blood Rush Molting, leave a corpse, gives us an additional uh, corpse to devour, gives us a little bit of essence just to proc our other skills. We're using Enforcer for the Command Skeletons just to make it really cheap on the essence cost keep those essence costs down was the best rune I could find, especially since there are so many good passives for this particular build. I didn't want to crowd the passive uh, slots with another uh, Commander of the Risen Dead, but that is an option. I'll go over that later. Got a lot of um, multipliers in this build. We've got the Rathma 6 piece. We've got the Justice set. We've got Scythe of the Cycle. Uh, so keep using your command skeletons, make sure you got your bone armor off, just so you maintain your, your multipliers. This build is slightly different from the T13 variation. Uh, on the T13 variation, what I wanted to do is get it free and clear of having to stun or anything like that, because the build itself didn't have a lot of stuns in it. B mainly because the T13 had to slot the belt, the gold wrap belt, to survive and be able to push high at low paragon. Well, in the Greater Rift build, you're already going to have a little bit more toughness from having higher Paragon and Augments and that sort of thing. So you can run with, the, you're definitely going to want to run with a different belt, but you don't have to run a toughness belt. You can run a CC belt, such as Court of the Sherma. And this tip uh, uh, came to me from good friend uh, Angry Role Player, thanks for suggesting this. I did not know that this belt had been buffed in 2.2. I completely missed that. It procs more often than it used to, and it also lasts longer than it used to, which is really cool. So we're going to use this to stun and blind, or slow and blind our enemies, which will proc our Crispin Sentence Ring. Yes, we fit that ring into this variation. It's going to give us huge bonuses along with our low cooldown bone armor. We can also use that on demand to proc Chrismans. It's just a very fluid build, mainly because I really wanted to keep curses out of this build. Uh, curses make you move even slower, and to me, speed just m means you want to move at a little bit more rapid of a pace. 
because if you have to stop and curse every single enemy, it's going to take a lot longer in the rift, and it's something I just didn't want. Uh, as a result, the build is squishier because we can't fit in something like Dainty's Binding, but we do get Blood Rush and we do get extra uh, utility, which is really nice. Uh, the build tries to make up for defense in other ways. I'll go over those in a little bit, but just know uh, this variation uses Crispin Sentence paired with uh, the Circle, of course, and then we've got Convention of Elements to give us another huge multiplier. This particular setup I found best because it's very mobile. You can move around, pick up orbs, you can dodge attacks, you don't necessarily have to worry quite as much about the Endless Walk uh, modifier in this setup. In a perfect world, I would have a Hellfire Amulet such as these. This one with the Fueled by Death passive, that would be our fifth passive that I would choose to put here. Um, Fueled by Death would give us additional run speed, move speed, stacks up to 30%. Since we're killing enemies fairly quickly and we're consuming corpses and we can keep up this bonus using our Blood Rush Molting Rune, it's just a very good choice to help speed up the rift, I think. And uh, there are some alternate passives you could go with. I'll go over those in a little bit. But just know that the Hellfire would go here. I'm just using this amulet for stats. And uh, yeah, there you go. Uh, so I've already established that this build has huge damage potential and additionally we're using the Enforcer Gem for another multiplier uh, the problem with this build is defense I mean we're pushing we're trying to push the higher greater risk because it's a slower moving build in our speed build but we still need some level of defense and the main mechanic I chose to use was moratorium 35 percent of all damage taken is instead staggered and dealt to you over a duration this is really good because I felt it better than the esoteric gem simply because it covered all damage sometimes you're getting hit by melee attacks sometimes you're getting hit by physical or ranged attacks that still deal a crap ton of damage and can one shot you basically so moratorium was the better mechanic in my opinion you can go with whatever you want or if you really want you can replace enforcer in this build and just go with uh, esoteric for a higher defensive setup that's an option um, but I felt this was enough defense with still keeping a high damage multiplier we also have a hybrid gym in this build we're using Bane of the powerful it gives us a multiplier that's fairly easy to keep up and also gives us a defensive quality we gain reduced damage from elites when you combine this with the reduced damage from elites on our chest piece it works really well to reduce damage from mortar and uh, lightning storm and you know all those dangerous elite affixes that would otherwise one shot you are that you're now gonna hopefully survive through those uh, now you see moratorium you're like you're gonna bleed if you're not consuming corpses, if you're not devouring and getting those extra c cannibalized stacks through uh, your Requiem Center Plate, then you may actually sustain more bleed than you can heal through, and that is true. So I've put another mechanic into the build for recovery, and that is Grizzly Tribute. We're here for 10% of life on hit when our minions hit an enemy. So this is another uh, cool way to get recovery. Uh, ideally, you would want about 30,000, uh, maybe a little bit more than 30,000 life on hit, life per hit. But unfortunately, this particular setup, I uh, had to put the life on hit on my bracer instead of my weapon, just because that's what I had. Ideally, you would want life on hit on weapon and then vitality on your bracer. So that's the main build. Let's now dive into some alternatives you could go with. I'm going to start with the passives, since those are the easiest. So we've got these four passives, which are the most critical, I would say. Uh, if you don't have a Hellfire, drop Fueled by Death uh, for certain. I mean, these are a lot better than... It. It's better to move slow than and kill things than not be able to kill things and live. So <laughs> you want to keep these four. Uh, this is your fifth passive I chose, but you can go... A different round. You could choose Commander of the Risen Dead, not my preference for your fifth passive. Um, 
It's not my preference, but that would allow you to use a different rune on command skeletons. You would probably use Freezing Grass since that would proc your Chrismans, which is really nice. It also gives you an on-demand stun. Uh, so that's another variation you could go with. But uh, since it was a speed build, I wanted to keep at least some level of speed in the build. <laughs> and that's how I uh, s sort of made a sacrifice to be able to do that. But you could opt for that. You could go also as your fifth passive, Overwhelming Essence. This would give you a larger essence pool. Something to note with this build, similar to the T13 variant, I wasn't emphasizing, since we are using Scythe of the Cycle, and it doesn't require that you have max essence to boost your damage, you don't have to have like a huge amount of essence. That's the cool thing. Of course, we do want to boost our pool somewhat, just so we can have more powerful mages, but we don't need to have passives like this crowding our passive slots. Now, it's still an option. I'll leave it as an option for your fifth passive if you want, but I found that it's really hard even still to fill up that 300 essence. I do recommend essence on your weapon and essence in Paragon though, just to give you 270 essence, which is a, a fair, I, f I felt like a really good amount to, to play with. Um, other alternate passives you could go with, it's not my choice, my, not my preference, but you could go with Final Service just to give you that uh, Second Life mechanic. I do not like this one because it kills your pets and you often end up dying afterwards anyway, so... <laughs> but it's an option. Uh, now let's go over some other alternatives. So something you've probably noted by now is that I do not have Tasker and Theo in this build. The Tasker and Theo boosts the attack speed of your pets, and that is a good bonus. It bumps you up two breakpoints uh, on your pet attacks, and it's it's quite it's at least ten frames, which is I don't know sixteen twenty percent additional attack speed for your pets, which is really good good for damage. But to me, Requiem Sir Plate was necessary and I did not want to sacrifice these multipliers uh, from the rings were just better than fitting in the Tasker and Theo your pets hit harder and they do more damage and they clear the ref faster than you would with having Tasker and Theo but if you do want to fit in Tasker and Theo into the build I have an alternate variation for you and this variation ran uh, dense rifts at about the same speed as this setup but uh, the reason I didn't go with it is that on longer, less dense rifts, like larger maps, uh, it did not perform as good because of the endless walk multiplier was, was lower. So I just swapped to the variation I was just talking about. I'm using endless walk in combination with the Ring of Royal Grandeur and Tasker and Theo in the cube. This gives me the extra attack speed for the pets, so it's a lot more consistent as far as pet damage is called. It's less reliant on Chrismans since we dropped the Chrismans, and you can just, you know, smooth through the rift. I did still find Cordo Sharma is a really good item to have, so I kept that in there, but if you really wanted to with this variation, you could swap to something like Witching Hour, get your extra attack speed, extra damage, might be nice. Uh, but, uh, we keep the Requiem Sarah Plate due to having the Ring of Reward Grandeur as well, so we keep our main restoration mechanic, and of course Circle is, is in the extra ring slot. So this this variation also did very well, and I also recommend it, but of course the first one I showed you is better. So anyway, that's it for the alternate setups. Let's now go through some of the affixes that you'll need. You'll need at a minimum 1.63, actually I think it's 1.217 or higher attacks per second. That's just to hit the 36 frames per attack breakpoint on your skeleton mages. At a minimum that's what you need. I do recommend more attack speed for this build because it's dual purpose. Attack speed increases the damage of your pets directly and it's separate from the breakpoint attack rate increase. Uh, it's not so much damage increase that you would want to go for it all the time, but in this case, since we are using Siphon Blood to restore Essence, attack, higher attack speed will help us restore Essence quicker and get us a uh, more, I guess, fluid build in that sense. And that's sort of what you want for a speed build, so attack speed is a very 
beneficial modifier, even if you're not going to hit the next breakpoint. So that's why I've, I've slotted attack speed on gloves, weapon, uh, both rings. But of course, if you wanted to, you could swap your glove roll to uh, vitality for more defense. You could swap your glove roll to cooldown for more cooldown if you wanted. Um, that sort of thing. Speaking of cooldown, I recommend a minimum of 30%. Uh, that's like the bare minimum. Um, I'm going to put in a little bit higher than that or try to put in you can go up to like 38 if you want um, that's with cooldown rolls you got diamond and helm paragon you got your shoulder roll and your shield roll as a base those are the base rolls if you wanted you like I said you could go up to 38 and roll cooldown in your gloves that's perfectly acceptable and that would get you lower cooldown on your blood rush so higher mobility and lower cooldown on your bone armor for more stuns which is really nice Defensive affixes that are very important. You want life percent rolls on your shoulder. You need a life percent roll on your belt. You need a life percent roll on your shield. These are very important rolls, seeing as you don't have any other place to put them. Otherwise, your health pool will be very low. And to that fact, or <laughs> I at least recommend putting vi uh, Vite Gems in your pants. Uh, you can opt in your chest as well if you're a little bit low like I am, but uh, at least in your pants is probably a good idea seeing as this build does not have as much vitality as some other builds might just to get your health pool up over that 800 you know K threshold sort of mark which it just makes it a lot better. Um, let's see as far as offensive modifiers goes of course you're gonna want physical on your amulet, physical on your bracer, skeleton mage damage very important Skeleton Mage damage on your boots as well, helm, and then, you know, crit, crit hit damage on rings, gloves, amulet, uh, wherever you can fit it, crit on your, on your shield, of course. So anyways, that's pretty enough the build in a nutshell. I hope you like this setup. Uh, like I said, you will die a little bit more, so give up the idea of those extra gem rolls and you can succeed. Uh, by pushing higher and getting higher XP rewards per hour, which would be the the main focus of this build, I would think, is that you know you're going to want to get those higher paragons quicker. Being able to roll those higher speeds uh, at a reasonable rate is really nice. So I hope you like this build, and I'll catch you in the wrist. I'm going to roll some more footage, and then at the very end. I'll put a rift with the alternate variation I showed with the Endless Walk and the Ring of War Grander and the Taskers just to show you that it's a similar speed when on a dense rift.